In this video we're going to talk about host groups and how those can correlate and relate to user access, whether that be for groups of users or for individuals. We'll certainly also talk about administering user groups or individual users within you know, Backup IT Analytics. By default, as collection is occurring within NetBackup IT Analytics, if you recall, within inventory, uh, we are organizing by default around objects as they are collected by object type. Over in the third icon from the far left is an icon called Host Groups. And host groups start with the uh, a top level, and then think of these as folder structures. And by default, in this environment, um, we have begun to automatically put in information as it's collected. But what we can do in a host group functionality is we can create our own subfolders, and we can put hosts into those. Now, why would we choose to do that? Probably the most compelling reason would be if there was a small group of hosts that I would like to restrict access to a certain user or set of users and only those hosts should they see then I could do that through host group control. Now one of the things that I like to do personal preferences I like to cascade to subgroups and I did that by clicking on the gearbox cascade to subgroups and then click apply and what that does is it just shows me how many objects are contained in the host groups. So I can tell that at the top level we have 11 hosts in total and we have these host groups as shown. So I'm going to, just to bring home this notion of a host group, I'm going to go ahead and create a host group and we're going to call it uh, Restricted. I called it constrained or small or <laughs> just a name and in this host group then we can see that it's now been uh, created for us and what we can do is we can go in and I'm going to pick one or two of our hosts and I'm going to associate them with both the top level host group called Veritas which is being done automatically and I'm going to also associate them with this group that we just created called restricted. So to do that, what I can do is I can I can see down in the lower screen here, I can see a host group overview. If I go to over inventory list on the button, I can see those same hosts here. Now let's assume that I wanted to put the AD, the server called AD Server Lab Local, into an additional host group. So what I can do is I can highlight that server and I'll go ahead and click a couple of more just to show that we don't have to do it one by one and I can choose edit and towards the bottom here you'll see an option to assign host groups so um, by default as I mentioned because it came in, in through uh, net backup we automatically brought that in and associated with, with the host group of the master server under the net backup product but I created uh, a host group of my own. I want to also add these hosts to the host group called Restricted. Now what's interesting here is when I do that you'll note that implicitly a given host can be a member of more than one host group at a given time. And there's reasons for that. If you chose to segment for example around criticality and location and many of the same things that we do through attributes you can do those functions through host groups and in which case it would make sense for uh, us to be able to to see and manage those entities depending upon what that host group was calling out. Now what we're going to do in the case of this restricted is we're going to show how we can limit a user's visibility to that restricted host group when they're created. So even if this were uh, you know whether it be 11 or 11 million hosts in the case of an individual user, if we've created even a hierarchy of hosts, we can specify the top level in this hierarchy that a user could see. So in, in the case of even net backup, I could already have set when we create a new users, I could limit a user's visibility to only the clients that have been under the net backup master host group. I, I chose restricted solely to kind of bring home the fact that we really 
have full control over the membership of a host group. Fine, well, we've got a host group. Now the next question is, what do we do with that in terms of users? And the answer is we manage users and user groups under admin and then users. And the, we'll start with users and privileges and then we'll, we'll expand into user groups. So at, by default, from an initial installation, the one user that's defined is the super user. And I'm going to go ahead and add in a new user here. The login can be, um, if you put, if you're doing an initial installation, these login names are wholly controlled within the NetBackup IT Analytics database. If you want to provision your environment to work with Active Directory or your own LDAP, then these logins would be uh, from that, that source. So I'm going to just make this really simple. The login for this user is going to be restricted. And they're going to be a type of end user. We're going to allow them to be active. Our, I get to set at this point, because it's uh, NetBackup IT Analytics managed passwords, I get to set an initial password for these users, which I would typically need to tell them. And we're just going to call this restricted and the same last name. And we do need to provide an email, so we're just going to say restricted at XYZ and put in optionally the work phone and cell phone and now this is the important piece by default a user would have visibility to all hosts at the top of the world but in our case where we've looked at defining this restricted host group we're asked we're going to specify that uh, this user called restricted will the top of the world that they will see will actually be correlated to that host group called restricted. Let me get rid of this. That is phase one of defining a user. The other piece to defining a user is that we need to also give that user privilege. Now to bring this home, if I forget to give a user privilege, and as a super user, I actually can impersonate the experience of that user. And I typically do this when I administer a NetBackup IT Analytics portal. Before I, when I create a user, I'll go ahead and make sure I got my settings correct for them. You can, as a super user, you can impersonate other users as long as they're not other super users. And it says, are you want to log in? I'm, yes, I do. I want to see this. I want to go ahead and leave. And we'll see an, a yellow banner at the top of our portal saying that we're impersonating somebody. It's a nice reminder. And what's interesting here is that this user sees essentially nothing. They don't see any, they don't have any inventory tabs. They don't have, there's nothing in their reports. There's nothing really for them to do. And this is an instant um, visual reminder that I probably forgot to give them any roles, any privileges. So when I see that, I can come, jump back in and I can go back and don't need to log out and log back in. I can just simply switch back to System Administrator. It asks me if I'm sure I am. It's giving me a caution that any work I did is not going to be saved, and I'm in. So let's go back to our user's privileges, go back to our restricted user, and look at what we can give them for privileges. Very granular control here. So in the case of this product, if I want them to have inventory, I can actually dictate which of, in this case being a foundation license, which of these functions or features are available to them. Perhaps I don't want them to see anything associated with the, the array appliance you know, functionality. I would just give them uh, potentially net backup servers and hosts. You can see that when I choose only some categories, we get a solid blue box indicating partial privilege. I'm not going to give these users any ability to do object management. No edits, no moves, no deletes. We're not going to let them worry about host groups. They're not going to assign attribute values. And the same thing isn't true in reports. So I can be very specific and say, whether I want them to be able to create their own reports. In this case, we won't allow that. And in fact, we're only going to allow them to have access to a couple of out-of-the-box templates. Even in under Backup Manager Management Reports, 
I'm only going to give them job summary and I will give them job status summary. The two that we've been playing with. It just, again, I'm being un probably unnecessarily restrictive here, but I'm just demonstrating that you have the full ability to dictate how much a user sees or doesn't see or what they can do or not do. Um, whether they, in the case of alerts, whether they can manage or maintain alerts and configure them. And under administration functions, this would be things like defining users, setting chargeback rules, using advanced tools, etc. This is going to be a very simple, highly constrained configuration. So we'll say restricted gets just those roles. And to quickly confirm what I just did, we would now go through and we could repeat that impersonation. Once again, a yellow bar reminding us that we're in, in a restriction. And notice now that we do, in fact, have an inventory. And just as we'd said, they got to see only backup servers and hosts. And notice that even though we know that there are 11 hosts in the total world that we as super users see, because they're limited to a, a, a group called restricted, that's all they see. They see the three hosts that are a member of that host group. And in fact, if they go into their host group hierarchy, um, that's the top of the world that they see. They don't know, they're not supposed to know, that there are potentially many, many, many uh, hierarchies of, of host groups above where they, they've seen. This could be the, the very tail of a chain of, of great depth, or it could be it's just simply its own, in this case, its own host group sitting by itself. Now what, so what we've just validated is that we, by those privileges, we were able to dictate very precisely what that user would see. And to further bring that home, if we look at what they see under reports, now they at least see the, the out of the box category for a backup manager. But note what they see when they go into management reports, only the two templates that we provided them access to. So just a very quick uh, clarification and nice validation that what, what I intended to do was in fact met. That user has uh, has only the access that we've, we've asked for them. So I'm going to go ahead and switch back to System Administrator and then everything that we've done for an individual is powerful, but what you'll often find as an administrator is that after a while with a large audience of users that needing to remember how to go and and set privileges and manage those on a recurring basis can get uh, a little busy. And so what you can do, similar to an Active Directory group, as an analogy, is you can set up user groups. So the same notion, you would define a user group and you could give it a, a name like um, a Backup and Restoration. And the domain is the domain. Now, the, the the couple of comments about this that uh, the first of all is I can specify who would be a member of this group and I can specify just as we did before I can be very precise in in the privileges so let's just emulate uh, what we just did for that inventory user very restricted set for this Burr group not probably what you typically do but just to show that I can go through and I can be just as precise or just as broad as we wish. And I believe we set a job status summary and a job summary is what we were allowing. And that was it. So in the same way that I went through and I did that privilege in an individual user basis, in the case of a user group, I can define those once. And then I can simply go through as I add users and I can add them to a group. And it just as you'd hope, I could have a user with individual privileges and I could also, they could also inherit privileges from group membership. In this case, they would be exactly the same in this example, but they wouldn't have to be. So um, you can pretty quickly see why managing privileges for groups of users can be quicker. Not only do you just do those privileges once, but you also have confidence that you've done that careful with all of the selections that are available to you, you get to do that just once. And there's another, another purpose to uh, remembering this functionality, and that is that when we put out a patch release to the NetBackup IT Analytics software, 
there will be times where we will release new report templates, for example, and only the super user will automatically see those functions. For anybody else, it would be up to the super user to remember to go in and grant that user, uh, the, the select users or groups, the, the new reports in this case. So if there were a new backup manager report that had come out with a, a later build that I wanted this group to see, I would not, of course, have to grant that to every user. I could simply go in and say, for example, that the, the master server job through job throughput, if that new or old, um, I don't need to go through and touch every user. I can just touch the user group and grant per permission to that, that new privilege for everybody in the group. Last comment about groups is that it is possible for uh, you to provision Net Backup IT Analytics so that if the user groups that you define within Net Backup IT Analytics exactly match Active Directory group names, that uh, you could have a user who is a member of an Active Directory group by that same name carrying that forward. Let's assume there's an Active Directory group called BUR. You can even set Net Backup IT Analytics up that as long as you've got this group and its privileges defined and that group exists with an active directory by the same name that a user if you wish could log into this portal using their active directory credentials and they would inherit all the privileges assigned to that same group and you know again active directory group equals net backup it analytics group name they would inherit those privileges implicitly a little opportunity there if you can consolidate and, and be consistent with those active directory names and you choose to then you can um, folks can inherit in other words if they belong to active directory you don't have to go and explicitly add them to the corresponding M -back net backup it analytics group name when they log in we'll we'll see that correlation and they'll they'll inherit that membership